all of us as clinicians want to deliver high quality evidence-based care to our patients. But most of us in our busy practices don't have time to do evidence reviews whenever we are confronted with a clinical question. And so the purpose of trustworthy clinical practice guidelines is to bring a synthesis of the evidence leading to trustworthy recommendations to the clinicians so that they in turn can feel confident that they're taking good care of their patients um, based on the highest quality evidence available. Guidelines primarily serve to support decision making with patients, with the recipients of healthcare or those who are affected by healthcare and they should be based on the best available research evidence and any contextual information that is necessary to make a good decision. It's important to have guidelines because healthcare practitioners are increasingly working in a time pressured environment and we're all looking to provide good quality care to patients and guidelines provide the ability to synthesize that data and to summarize and, and inform the practitioner this, this is what you should be doing. The American Society of Hematology has undertaken a very bold uh, effort to develop guidelines across the spectrum of clinical situations where venous thromboembolism becomes a major problem. I've been involved in other guideline efforts and there's just really no comparison to the amount of rigor that went into this effort as comparative to others. So I think that this product is going to stand out as being a great example of what a good guideline should be. Venous thromboembolism is a very common and important public health problem. It is estimated that one to two out of every 1,000 Americans are diagnosed with venous thromboembolism every year, and 60 to 100,000 Americans die of venous thromboembolism every year. There are more people in the United States that die each year of venous thromboembolism than of AIDS and breast cancer combined. And I think that there is an underappreciation for this disease. Venous thrombosis is such an important area for the development of evidence-based guidelines because it is a disease that affects patients who have an underlying disease. These are cancer patients that have developed thrombosis or cardiology patients who have developed thrombosis. So many different physicians touch this area and it's impossible to keep up with the field when it's moving forward so quickly. These guidelines are principally for clinicians who take care of patients uh, who either treat venous thromboembolism or are trying to prevent venous thromboembolism. That includes hematologists, but it touches on many, many other specialties as well. Hospitalists, general internists, family doctors, intensive care specialists, obstetricians, surgeons. I could go down the line. This is truly a disease that cuts across many medical disciplines. We believe that patient involvement in guideline development is very important. We have found in our ASH VTE guidelines that patients make important contributions by offering their perspective. Sometimes we get so entrenched in the numbers and um, the type of studies that are presented, it's always good to go back and say, okay, let's stop for a second and just see does all of that make sense. In many cases, as we were going through our deliberations, we would ask the patient to weigh in on what were their perspectives, what were their thoughts, what did they think was important about a certain decision. And those types of perspectives and recommendations got incorporated into our deliberations as well as into our final recommendations. The patient really did bring a unique piece to that puzzle, if you will, uh, as we put together these guidelines. No matter how high quality a guideline is, it's essentially worth no more than the paper it's printed on unless it becomes implemented and leads to improvements and outcomes for patients. And so ASH um, is putting a tremendous amount of effort and resources into dissemination and implementation. ASH has partnerships with a number of other professional societies that it will work with to help disseminate these guidelines. ASH is planning a number of initiatives to help with implementation of the recommendation. Pocket guides, 
apps, webinars, uh, toolboxes that practicing clinicians and institutions can use to bring these recommendations to their patients. So they not only need to be published in a hematology journal or presented at a hematology meeting, but it's important for us to take the show on the road and make sure that this evidence is being presented at the meetings of our colleagues as well. The real value of having the American Society of Hematology on board is it's an organization that can sustain the guideline process. Often guidelines are developed once and they're a snapshot in time, but the, the world is constantly changing, new evidence is being generated, so a, a very, very important part of, of guidelines is their upkeep and ensuring they're remaining relevant to practitioners. One of the important challenges that is faced by those who develop guidelines is how to handle new evidence. There is new research and um, the pace of new discovery and new evidence is rapid. And so it might not be long before a recommendation becomes obsolete uh, if it was published before that new evidence. And so one of the things that ASH is working on is developing a way to review new evidence as it becomes published so that we can make sure that we keep these guidelines uh, relevant. Since the last guidelines were published, we now have four new drugs that are available on the market for people to prescribe, and we don't have any guideline information about how to use those. One of the things that was really exciting for our panel is that we are able to dig in and try to make some recommendations about how to use those drugs in the treatment of people with venous thromboembolic disease. With every one of the questions and recommendations that we put together, we identified new questions that we have to go further in to better take care of our patients and provide the best care that we can across uh, the breadth of all the providers who take care of patients with venous thromboembolism. Having the weight of the American Society of Hematology on board as such a successful organization, I think, gives us great confidence that these guidelines will benefit physicians, patients, and practitioners for years to come.